The Rise of Skywalker. What to say? Yeah, so this video is just going to be my pure, unfiltered thoughts on the movie. Um, I'm eating cereal. Just got out of the theater. Literally, it's only been like 15 minutes. I have thoughts. Um, I'm definitely going to have to see it again. Because this movie is just... It's 0 to 100 in less than 12 parsecs. We'll leave it at that. It's way too quick. I had a friend tell me... This film is trying to cram an entire trilogy's worth of story in one two-hour movie. And it's just impossible. You can't do that and have a good film be made. The first half of the film is a mess. A flat-out mess. You got random characters popping up all, all over the place, introducing story elements that have no precedence in the previous films. Which annoys me. I like it when things are nice and tight and concise. There's just loose threads everywhere in this film. From like Zori Bliss having a relationship with Poe to uh, Lando's, I guess, daughter appearing in the third act out of nowhere. Obviously, Palpatine himself is a huge curveball. But it's like, come on, what? It just seems like a massive course correction because The Last Jedi screwed up so badly. Um, and I will ride that line until I die. I think The Last Jedi was a huge misstep. Ryan Johnson took the trilogy and I don't want to say drove it into the ground, but he definitely subtracted more than he added to uh, the franchise and it hurt this film. JJ had an impossible task of bridging eight films together somehow um, after the last film had essentially added nothing to it. Um, the only thing of merit that I can think of that The Last Jedi added to this new trilogy and the franchise as a whole is that interesting um, force connection between Rey and Kylo. And that's something that Palpatine brought up as well. That's an interesting thing. I really like their relationship. Um, and I think Kylo Ren is the most interesting character out of the whole sequel trilogy. I like how he became Ben Solo again. I always thought that he would be redeemed. I think the Skywalker bloodline should be um, focused on the light side. I, I just, I, this movie was terribly unfocused. And, um, and I think that's the fault of The Last Jedi. Technically, I think all the films are very well made. Uh, the CGI is, of course, excellent, coming from Disney and Lucasfilm, and um, I can't remember the CGI company that does it. Industrial Light and Magic, I think. Skywalker Sound, all those guys. It's technically well made. It's just the lore and the story and uh, that's where I have issues. I mean, this at times just is just mm, mm, very frustrating. I'm doing more talking than eating my cereal. I think there are now, now, keyword now, there are now two unforgivable sins from the Disney Star Wars films. Number one, flat out. Han, Luke, Leia, throw Chewie in there if you want to, but the, the big three, Han, Luke, Leia, have not appeared in, a, in the same scene since Return of the Jedi. When you start making these new films, you have a perfect opportunity to throw all three of them in the same scene. Just have them share a scene together. Um, and they didn't, and that's a huge problem with me. I think it's a huge missed opportunity. I just, uh, I, I can't forgive Disney for not putting those three in a scene together and just, you know, killing them off without ever, like, seeing each other <laughs> it, within the story. They haven't seen Luke in, what, like, 15 years or so? I, I just think that's strange. Courtesy of the last five minutes of The Rise of Skywalker, the number two cardinal sin from Disney Star Wars is why, 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 why would you not put Anakin Skywalker in that last shot of Luke and Leia looking on as Rey takes the Skywalker name at the Lars homestead. That's the family homestead on Tatooine. Luke and Leia are there. Why not Anakin? Why not Anakin? J.J. Abrams specifically said this movie is going to tie all eight films, all three trilogies together. And what better way to do that than have the principal characters of each trilogy 
in the same spot, sharing in the Skywalker name. You can have Hayden Christensen come back like everybody, Hayden Christensen, Hayden Christensen come back like everybody wants him to. Everybody wanted that. And when I heard his voice, when Rey is calling on the Jedi, I loved hearing all those voices. I, 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 I heard Qui-Gon, I heard Mace, I heard Obi-Wan, I heard Anakin, of course, which I was over the moon about. I just think that's a huge missed opportunity too. And it doesn't make me happy. It makes me really disappointed. It makes me really disappointed. They had a shot and they didn't take it. And something's missing in that shot. I'm gonna go back and watch the film. Anakin needs to be in that shot. That's the Skywalker bloodline. And we haven't seen all three of the Skywalkers together. Anakin is finally reunited with both of his children in the essence of the Force. I think that's beautiful and they didn't show it. They didn't show it and they could have. And that is just not right. That's so frustrating. That is probably the most frustrating thing about this film. I think asking for all, all those prequel Jedi to show up in like a Force Ghost form is too much to ask for. But Hayden Christensen appearing at the end as a Force Ghost with his children next to him, finally reunited, um, I think was just a huge missed opportunity. Rey, Luke, Leia, and Anakin in the same place where it all began. But enough about that. So I already mentioned the first half of this movie is a mess. It's too quick. Pacing is all over the place. Um, the first half of the movie, we jump from planet to planet, um, I think way too quickly. I think it needs to slow down and just be its own film. Finally, they have all three of the main characters, Poe, uh, po, po. Finn, Poe, and Rey are finally on an adventure together. And Chewbacca, C-3PO, BB-8, all on an adventure together in the Millennium Falcon trying to find this Wayfinder device. Cool, I like that. Um, that's fine. Um, but they just jump from place to place to place just way too quickly, I thought. It's just, you don't even get a chance to breathe. And from the change in location to the dialogue, it's just so s snappy and quippy, and it's pew, pew, pew. There, there is a better way to write character. Uh, there is a better way to write dialogue for three characters sharing a scene, sharing an adventure, and it's not have one person talk and then immediately as he's done have another person talk and then you know just bam, 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 bam. That's nuts. That's insane. I don't jive with that at all. The editing I thought was just. It was just way too quick, rushed, and I bring that back to Last Jedi, but I don't want to talk about that anymore. What else did I like? I liked the oh, the beautiful scene where Luke is raising the X-Wing with the Force. I thought it was beautiful and poetic. Nice callback to Empire, and Yoda's theme is there as well as he's lifting it up. I thought that was awesome. Seeing an OG X-Wing made me geek out. Um, what else made me geek out? That's the stuff that I love. That's the stuff. That's the stuff. Mm. This is the stuff. I loved, oh my gosh, finally. It's about time they retire that lightsaber. I love the Skywalker lightsaber. It's been there since the beginning, but man, oh man, it is time to move on. Let the past die. Rey's got a new lightsaber and it's built out of her staff, which she carried with her throughout the movie, which is great. It should have been a... <laughs> Should have been one of those force pikes because she knows how to use the double bladed thing. It should have been one of those. It should have been purple. Combining the dark and the light, I think would have been awesome. Purple lightsaber. Yellow doesn't bother me at all. I think that's great. <laughs> I'm sick of blue. <laughs> um, man, this is gonna be a long video. So you have Luke's saber, Anakin's saber, Rey's saber, whatever you wanna call it. And then you have uh, Leia. Leia's lightsaber makes an appearance and we get a small, brief, but awesome scene of Luke training Leia. And they're both younger. This is after Return of the Jedi, before Force Awakens, and before Luke loses his mind and goes into exile. They're training together on some planet. I think it's Dagobah. I'm gonna have to watch it again, but I think they're training on Dagobah. And young Luke, young Mark Hamill, young Leia, 
are training. They're they're dueling together. They both have their blast shield helmets on. That just harkens back to all the old legacy books that I've read where Leia's a full-on Jedi. She's got her own blade, her own saber. Um, and Rey uses that saber at the end of the film fighting Palpatine and his forces on uh, Exodia, Exodal, whatever that planet was. That should have been Korriban. So I love that. I love that there's finally another saber in the mix. There's more than one lightsaber out there. I'm very happy with uh, Ray's new lightsaber. It's about time. Um, I don't know that much about yellow lightsabers other than Temple Guards used them because they were kind of more neutral. Um, that's cool, that's fine. I, I'm all for Ray being a unique Jedi slash Sith slash Skywalker, whatever she is now. I love how the um, hilt is made out of her staff. Uh, it should have been purple. That's all I have to say on that. I loved the battle that him and Rey had in the wreckage of the Death Star. I thought that was awesome for a number of reasons. One of which I thought it was, it, it mirrored the fight that Anakin and Obi-Wan had on Mustafar. Um, you had Anakin and Obi-Wan fighting for like the fate of the galaxy, Ben and Rey fighting for the fate of the rest of the Jedi, the fate of the Sith. Um, and I really felt that. I felt that in that moment. I was like, wow, these waves crashing. It's like the lava from Mustafar. Um, just the epic scope of the battle I thought was fantastic. The struggle, the personal struggle between the two of them I thought was fantastic. Um, I love the relationship that they have, which is why I was really disappointed when Ben's life essence drained from him at the very end when he heals Rey, who has, who has died at this point. Rey has died from defeating the Pal Palpatine. Uh, ben sacrifices himself to save Rey, and there's a brief moment shared between them where they're both alive and they're both fine, and you're like, yes, awesome, happy ending for both of them. No, Ben dies, and he becomes one with the Force, he disappears, and at the same time his mother, Leia, also disappears, um, so the Skywalker bloodline is now no more. It is now Rey. Palpatine. Yeah. On that note, I think it's great that um, Ray goes back to the um, Skywalker homestead. Yeah, that final image of Luke and Leia was great, but I just can't help but think, man, I, their father needs to be there. Anakin needs to be there, um, and I'm gonna hold on to that one till I die. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought the film. Oh, we haven't even talked about Palpatine. What am I doing? I'm, Finishing and I haven't even talked about Papa Palpatine, the Senate man, come on! We got the do it line, he said do it. And it was great, I looked at my dad and I was like, mm, this, this was up. Palpatine's back, he was a big threat, he was super powerful, super old, and decrepit, and dying. But it was just, you know, the whole thing about Palpatine even being alive in the first place, there's no precedent for it, there's no build up, it's just course correction, and it's obvious, I just didn't like it. Um, you did see, when Kylo first arrives on Exodia, I, it's not Exodia, but I can't remember it. I know that's a Yu-Gi-Oh term, Exodia, but Kylo Ren arrives on Exodia. You see in a vat, like a cloning vat, you see Snoke heads and body parts. So Snoke was just a puppet the whole time, which is kind of disappointing because Andy Serkis deserves so much better. But that was fine, I guess they explained it. And it makes sense that he would be a puppet for uh, the puppet master, Palpatine himself. There's just, there was no build up to it. The Last Jedi dropped the ball so hard. There's a whole scene where he's like stealing the life essences of Rey and Kylo at the end. I thought that was weird. I don't know why, but I just uh, thought that was weird. Yeah, I, I love Palpatine. I think he's a really cool character. And of course I grew up on the prequels, so I'm, I'm a prequel apologist, I guess. He was okay. I just wish they had built up to it better, you know? I just wish it served the story as opposed to a cash grab. Um, I like the relationship between all three of the characters. I like Poe, I like Finn, I like Rey. That was another random thing that popped up was um, Finn is reunited with deserters from the First Order, other stormtroopers that defected like he did. Uh, and that's on the planet where the Death Star wreckage is. And he just like randomly is with them. That was a little strange. Maz Kanata's back but she didn't really do anything. Dominic Monaghan is in it, but he doesn't really do anything. <laughs> Snap Wexley is back, he doesn't need to do anything, and then he dies, which I was really, <laughs> I was like, no, Snap! <laughs> I love the pilots, I love Wedge, I love, I love Luke when he's in his piloting scenes. I love Porkins, 
big Zark Ladder. I love the pilots. Pilots are cool. And Snap Wexley could have been another one of those cool pilots. And then they just kill him. No! Ah, that sucked. I love seeing Wedge Antilles again in the final battle. That was awesome. Uh, Dennis Lawson, I think is his name, um, who's notorious for not liking Star Wars. Um, he was back for a cameo appearance, which was awesome. Nine Nub was there. Uh, Akbar's son was there, which was kind of a cool thing to see during the credits. It said uh, Albus Akbar. I don't know. Ben's weird cross guard saber's gone. He chucked that out. And that was an awesome moment too. The moment that he shares with his father, Han Solo, on the wreckage of the Death Star. Um, it's not a Force Ghost Han Solo. Like I, I was like, oh my gosh, did they? No, he's not a Force Ghost. He's just a memory that Ben has. It's his inner struggle personified through his father. And it mirrors the scene from A Force Awakens where he stabs Han in the chest. He says the same line, he says, I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. Do it. In that moment, he makes the decision to join the light side once again, chucks the saber into the water, and then he goes off to uh, to help Rey. He must have found a working TIE fighter from a... Uh... How is there that much wreckage of the Death Star? That thing shattered in a million pieces. It was atomized. Uh, and yet, here we are. And it's not Endor, by the way. It said something about the Endor system, but it's one of the moons surrounding Endor? I'm not sure what was going on there, but um, Lando's daughter at the very end was revealed, I guess, or hinted at, which is just kind of weird to have her pop up in the last 10 minutes of the last film of the franchise. Chewbacca, there was a weird, all right, this is another thing I had. So many weird plot points, like, Chewbacca fake dying? What was the point of that? It didn't add anything other than like, oh, we need to go and rescue Chewie because now he's alive. It's like, just, no, what? Do something else. I don't know, just, I thought that was dumb. I thought the whole Ray jumping over the tie interceptor was dumb. Um, I did like seeing her train with Leia they knew what they were doing putting that scene in because it's like, look everybody, she's training. So she's trained now, which means she can, you know, be justified in being able to do this crazy force shit that he, she's doing. It was good to see her actually training. She was healing people. Um, okay, that leads me into another tangent. There's a weird scene in a weird cave on a weird planet involving a giant snake and... I don't know if it was a Sith or what, but they were trying to find his ship so they could find the Wayfinder device so they could find Palpatine's homeworld. Or his uh, staging ground for that Sith fleet. She heals that giant snake thing, but I think that was a mistake because that moment where she heals Ben would have been so much more powerful had we not known she had the ability to heal people. I could be wrong about this, I'm probably wrong about a lot of things, but I think that moment where she heals that giant snake creature would have been more effective because in that moment I was like, oh my god, you they just killed Ben Skywalker in the most in the stupidest way possible. Leia like blindsided him and then he just gets stabbed and then he's dead. And then that would have been so anticlimactic. And then whoa, what's this? She's healing him. Awesome. That would have been really cool. C3PO. Good on him. He got a lot of screen time in this film. He was important. At least he was uh used in some way. Um, I love those legacy characters, man. I love those original trilogy characters. I'm glad they didn't kill Lando. Um, I really did like how they integrated Carrie Fisher into the film. Um, I thought it was obvious that they used footage from Episode 7, but that's not something that they were hiding. That's something they embraced. It's just obvious because I think she's wearing the same clothing, and she gets limited dialogue, and the whole scene where she's actually sacrificing her, her essence to find Ben and to distract him when he's fighting Rey in the Death Star. Um, it was obvious that she wasn't there to film that because you don't see her face, you don't see her. She probably was gone before they had a chance to film that, but you know, they have to film her passing somehow in the film. So uh, that's what we got. Um, and I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Uh, I was really sad when Carrie Fisher passed away because that's the first of those original three characters, man. And that struck me. That. I was very sad uh, to hear that, but I thought they integrated her into the film well. 
uh, well enough, as well as they could have. And um, that's pretty much it, I guess. I don't know if the camera's recorded everything, but that's what we got. Rise of Skywalker was not bad, not perfect. Definitely better than The Last Jedi. But um, yeah, it's just a shame this trilogy wasn't handled better. It's just saying, it's a real shame that there wasn't a greater vision to it um, and the story wasn't quite fleshed out all the way.